Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in JE Advanced Solution Series which I call it as Alpha and Omega of your preparation that is the starting and ending of your preparation. So I have brought forward to you an old debated question among teachers and students alike from the JE 2017 paper about a comprehension that had a physical situation of a ring being twirled around a finger in a horizontal plane and it was followed by two questions. Okay, the situation was that JE deleted one of the questions and kept the other one as it is. So was the question ambiguous or is it a genius from the JE uh, 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 paper setter? So we'll try to uh, completely do the postmortem of this question concepts wise and also ensure whether this problem can be solved within the JE syllabus in the exam conditions. We'll top it off with five practice problems ranging from the difficulty levels of JE mains to JE advanced and also the G, uh, Olympiad uh, physics, okay? So if you are a uh, physics enthusiast, I would say grab a popcorn. And if you are a JE aspirant, I would say grab a book and pen and try to take down the things as the video goes by. Either which way, I can guarantee you it's going to be a joyous ride. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the problem statement. So can this be solved using JE physics? Let's try to find out. One twirls a circular ring of mass M and radius R near the tip of one's finger as shown in the figure one, this one. In the process, the finger never loses contact with the inner rim of the ring. The finger traces out the surface of a cone shown by the dotted line. The radius of the path traced out by the point where ring and finger is in contact is small r. The finger rotates with an angular velocity omega naught. The rotating ring rolls without slipping on the outside of a smaller circle described by the point where the ring and the finger is in contact and this is the top view in the figure 2. The coefficient of friction between the ring and the finger is mu and the acceleration due to gravity is g. Okay, so there are two questions. First, the total kinetic energy of the ring as shown by the situation is one of these four options you're supposed to mark. And the minimum value of omega naught below which the ring will drop down is these are four options that you have to choose from, okay? So I would request you to pause this video in case you're new to this question and give it a try for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the concepts and also the final key and the analysis of the situations along with the practice problems, okay? So before we move on, like I always keep requesting you. So please do take the request seriously for the health of this channel. So 750 likes for this particular video and above, I would upload the next video and I'm doing uh, um, um, a lot of uh, hard work for the uh, next video. So I would be really motivated if you can do that for me. Okay, thanks for all the support, unconditional love that you have been showering on me. And that also keeps me going ahead. Okay, so once this is out of our way, let's move forward and try to understand one point that I asked in the community post a few days back regarding this particular problem was whether the finger's motion is rotatory because he said the finger rotates with an angular velocity omega naught in the question. So let me go back to that point. So he said the finger rotates with an angular velocity omega naught. There was a slight uh, ambiguity in that statement. He's talking about the point of contact of this particular finger going around in a circular motion. It's not a rotatory motion. It's actually a translatory motion, especially if the finger was considered to be nearly vertical. Okay, so his motion is similar to the hula hoop where the person who is using the hula hoop is going to go in a translatory curvilinear motion. He's not going to turn around, right? So as this person is going to uh, watch you, so you're going to see her face always in front of you. The face is not going to go behind the camera and it's not a rotatory motion. It's called translatory curvilinear motion. So let me show it to you, even though it's an animation, I think you should have a fair idea about that. So something like this, right? And let's go back. Right, so in order to have a fairer idea about the rotatory and translatory frame observers, 
uh, let's um, ha have a uh, go through about this particular old video of mine in which uh, I, at the third minute in this particular video, I've explained the difference of these two frames of references. Also another one, the recent one uh, compared to this video upload, uh, where an educative problem on the translatory curvilinear motion was done with five basic problems, which are a must for a JE aspirant. So please do check out the link of these two videos in the I button and the description below, okay? So once that is done, what we'll do in this particular video is two parts of analysis, okay? So the first one is to see what JE wanted students to assume in the problem, okay? And also what actually happens and what's the real physics behind this particular situation, uh, which is similar to the hula hoops uh, uh, rotation, okay? So, and also we'll fi finally look at whether the final key given was justified or not, okay? So let's start off with what JE wanted in question one, which was about kinetic energy. Okay, so the, you can see the JE wanted the ring to stay horizontal, right? And in the top view, this blue color circle represents the rings, one of the positions. Remember, the finger doesn't rotate in a radius of small r. This red color structure that I have drawn is nothing but the small circle that you have on the surface of this cone, which is the point of contact circular motion. So different, different points of contact on this finger will uh, move at different positions in this particular uh, circle. That small radius of the circle is small r. Okay, right. And the radius of the ring is capital R. Okay, different material points on the finger come in contact with the different material points on the ring like we saw even in the hula hoops case, right? what does the center of mass of the ring do, right? So the center of mass itself is going to go around the center of this red circular motion. So this center of the red circle is going to uh, act as the axis of rotation for the center of mass of the ring itself. Not just that, the entire ring would be under pure rotation about this particular point. Okay, so what's the radius of that circular motion for the center of mass? You could see that this entire distance would have been capital R and this is small r. So this subtraction leads to this green color radius for this yellow dotted circle represented by the motion of the center of mass as capital R minus small r. So keep this in mind as we move along to calculate the KE. Okay, so to give you a fairer idea, so I've depicted different positions from the top view, how it looks like when the ring is in that kind of motion. Okay, so this is the first diagram, right? To depict the anti-clockwise sense, I've drawn the diagram also in the anti-clockwise sense. So this is the first picture. As the ring moves around, it comes in contact with the bottom point like this. Okay, so, and then you go around to this picture in anti-clockwise sense, so the ring comes here. And center of mass is still going in circle, right? And then you go here. So different points on the finger are going to come in contact with the different points on the ring. Okay, so this tells you that the uh, ring's angular velocity and the finger's angular velocity are going to be the same, right? And to reiterate my point, center of mass is moving in a circular motion of radius capital R minus small r, okay? So with this clear, the kinetic energy of the ring as per JE, assuming all the things that I told you, would be clearer if you can visualize this is the axis passing through the uh, center of that smaller circle and perpendicular to the screen as you're watching with a radius r minus r distance from the center of mass. So center of mass is going to have a speed of r minus r into omega naught. Important one for the next question also. That's why I wrote it here. So you can calculate the kinetic energy of this blue color material ring in two ways. Either you can take Ke of that as Ke of center of mass plus Ke about center of mass for any general planar motion that we take up, okay? Which tells you that Ke of center of mass is half m into this velocity square that I have written here. And about Cm, the moment of inertia perpendicular to this plane would be mr square because it's a ring into omega naught square, half i omega naught square, i Cm that I have written. So this is the kinetic energy, okay? Or you could have said the ring is in pure rotation about an axis passing from here perpendicular to the plane as you're watching, then you could have directly written half I into axis omega naught square. So I, I can use parallel axis theorem for shifting from here to here, the distance being R minus R, you end up getting the same answer in both ways. But if you check the options, the options didn't have any of this, right? So you could see 
none of the four answers matched with the calculation that we have done. And that's why you could see below that the JE, due to some internal review, whoever has done that, has decided to award the marks and that means it became a bonus. But if you carefully observe for the next question, there is an answer. So let's try to see whether that answer was right or wrong or what was needed to solve it. Okay, so I'm excited. So let's move on to the next question. So what was JE expecting us to do for the question number two? So you could see on the left side, I picked the figure again from the diagram. I, I'm thinking that JE wanted us to take the ring to be horizontal from the picture. Okay, find the surface of the cone, which is a slant one, the finger is slightly slanted. I'm assuming the angle made by that slant line with vertical is theta. Okay, so I borrow that direction here for the ring. Okay, and therefore the normal reaction should be tilted like this and the friction should act along the surface of contact. So this is the way. So this borrowed theta will act here and the center of mass will become center of gravity and mg would be acting this way. And remember this CM is going around in a circle of radius capital R minus small r as we found out in the question number one. Okay, so what are the equations of motion that J wanted us to write? Okay, so this is what J wanted to write. Okay, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. So let's go ahead. Uh, in the vertical direction, since the center of mass is not moving up or down, there should be a balance of forces. So I took F's component, N's component downwards, subtracted them and equated to weight. Okay, right. So then uh, in the horizontal direction, this F's component this way and N's component, which are added up, should provide the required centripetal force for the center of masses circular motion going around. Okay, so that is what I have written. R minus R was the radius of that circular motion. Rearranging, solving for F and N, you would end up having an expression in which uh, for the critical condition, you wanted the minimum angular velocity, right? So I'll try to get the limiting friction. Otherwise the ring will fall off, it will slip off. So F is less than less equal to mu into N and using all these three conditions and that cos theta was not provided in the question. So we are assuming that it is small, maybe that's what J wanted us to take. And cos theta is one and sine theta is zero is what they wanted us to understand. So effectively, let me draw redraw the diagram for you with theta equal to zero. So effectively, J wanted this at the critical condition. I already written the critical value of the friction. Okay, for a minimum, minimum omega. So mu n will act this way, n will act this way, and mg will act this way. And mg and mu n should be equal to each other to balance the forces. And n force, which is alone, should provide this centripetal acceleration. Okay, so solving these two, you'd end up getting omega minimum is g divided by root of, uh, uh, sorry, square root of g divided by mu into r minus r, which was the option A that they gave. But there is a catch here. Decent students, good students who have a um, JE level understanding of torque will have a problem with this. This mu n, which is mg, and this is also mg under that critical condition form a couple. And about the center of mass, remember, about the center of mass, if there is an unbalanced couple, your ring will twist and therefore cannot stay horizontal like this. Use your right hand thumb rule to understand what is the twist that these two MGs will produce, okay? It will produce, as you're watching on the screen, a clockwise twist. That means the ring will tend to have a rotation about its horizontal diameter. Okay, so that torque, which is unbalanced, caused trouble for the students in going ahead and understanding whether this particular question can be answered or not. And those students were actually right. This was a wrong assumption by JE. So let me move ahead and try to sort out things. Uh, so case one, what are the two things that could happen, right? The ring will actually make an angle with the horizontal, right? So I, because of the length of the video, I'm not taking it up here. Uh, so th the idea is the ring will actually make an angle with the horizontal and uh, that angle I'm taking test phi. An alternative problem I have uh, picked up, okay? It's a famous problem from one of the Olympiads. An alternative problem with the ring moving around a fixed cylinder. Let's, let's try to keep it simple, okay? So even with the cylinder being fixed, that means the finger is represented by cylinder here and the ring has to go around it. You can never have this to be horizontal. Okay, right. The PDF of this problem and the solution is shared below in the description. So please go ahead and check it out. I, I, I'm not taking it because I want to do it in another video as we move along the five practice problems, the Olympiad ones, you'll understand why I'm skipping it here. 
okay so one thing's for sure that the ring cannot be horizontal okay so what is the second thing in the hula hoop you will get a uh, illusion right in the video that i have played already right so if you play it again so if you carefully observe there is a illusion right i know this is uh, uh, an animation but even if you watch the real life videos it looks like it's staying almost horizontal so what's the catch there so there is a second thing that can happen the ring will have a wobble about a horizontal diameter passing through the point of contact okay so when the person or the finger in each of these examples is moving around there is a chance that this ring almost stays horizontal but it will have an another angular velocity about a horizontal diameter that's called a wobble okay right it's like an omega which is perpendicular to the other omega so what's the video link of the wobbling of a hollow hoop to get an idea so i've showed you the animation the real life video i can't show it due to copyright issue so which i have placed it in the description so just watch it it's a 20 second video to give yourself an idea of a real person how the hula hoop goes up and down and keeps wobbling if you uh, play it in slow motion you will understand so this wobbling creates a gyroscopic effect and these effects can only be solved or understood using euler's equations which are not part of je syllabus okay and by by the way there is a problem solving that happens for the condition of stability also there is a particular radius and angle for which this uh, stability will be acquired okay so olympiad aspirants will be very interested because uh, that's a uh, not a very difficult thing to master so we'll try to do it in our channel in the future right so till then you just check out that pdf that i have up, uh, put in the description okay so Uh, torque analysis is uh, required to understand that wobbling uh, to give you an idea even though you are a je aspirant right so it's uh, similar to the gyroscopic uh, wheel experiment that you have in your ncert textbook okay, you can refer to resnick also for this famous experiment right so, so most of you will be aware of this so if you have a bicycle wheel which is supported by only one string on one side with the axle having some length and remember this tension and this mg if they act like a couple they produce actually a twist if this bicycle was at rest it will just fall down like this you could see this picture but it will not fall down if it were given a spin l spin use your right hand thumb rule can be produced this way in order to have an omega this way and with these two torque that the gyroscope is going to precess around this axis so hula hoop on the right hand side or the finger and the ring experiment possesses a similar thing and as you could see i have presented a picture here some of the hoops are at a certain angle and as this video goes around this these things are going to wobble up and down that means this horizontal uh, ring is going to slightly change planes up and down which needs to be studied using the uh, gyroscopic effects and the euler equation so the pdf of those gyroscopic effects is also shared below um, so please go through that those who are interested in olympiads especially so there are two pdfs one for the cylinder and the ring experiment in the previous page that i showed right here this one case one and the case two for the wobbling effects okay so all these things will be recollected back when we do a future video on euler's uh, equations okay so then finally was the final key of the je justified i think first question was very obvious it was a wrong uh, answer so out of the four there was nothing so they had to give a bonus but asking students to forget about a visible torque on this particular ring and assuming this to be horizontal was something very far fetched and silly by it they just didn't want to delete both the questions right looks very uh, arrogant of them right uh, you should have thought about good students uh, students who know extra things should not be penalized india sends a lot of students every year to olympiads and they have sufficient knowledge slightly above je to know that this question was wrong and to put those kind of good students in dilemma in an exam is actually not welcome at all according to me but if i if you ask me as a student if i were in the exam i would look at this diagram look at the four options and i would mark the most possible answer that you will uh, get in that particular situation okay so uh, it goes two ways right i am not happy with the je but at the same time i would advise students to look at the options and form a educative guess um, it's also up to you whether you want to risk yourself with the negative marking so it's a double edged sword okay so 
what we will do is in this video not uh, take up bad concepts or ambiguous ones we'll sure sure, uh, sure shot take up things which are perfect and required for mains to advance to olympiad situation so here we go with the pro practice problem one we'll start off with the spinning gyroscope okay so there's a simple passage here followed by two questions which i would say are at ncrt level so this description and the picture are given in the ncrt so you should have studied this and it's also will be at the borderline of the je advanced situations okay so basic question try to read comment your answer along with the timestamp below in case you struggle i am there to take it up in the physics surgery quickies series okay so practice problem number one done Second one, uh, I would like to test you on how well you understand the rotating vectors, right? This is a very standard situation of a conical pendulum with a single point mass going around in a horizontal circle with this ideal thread. So in this one, I want you to calculate the magnitude of average torque of all forces about O point here. So O is not marked here, O is the suspension point here, okay, not the center, O is the suspension point during half a revolution. So during this half revolution, so what is the average torque? So uh, this is again at a mains level, I could say easier side of the JE advance, I'll answer this in the physics surgery originals, okay, so let's see the next one don't forget the timestamp for your response so that i can easily respond to your answers below in the comment section so after practice problem number three uh, is still in the je advanced uh, or mains uh, level situations this is the reverse of the finger and the ring this time the ring is fixed and uh, it's not the finger it's a stick under the ring that is moving on this particular ring so read the question very carefully word by word and try to understand the situation and try to calculate the frequency of the motion okay so this problem has been picked up from morin which is a constant supplier of uh, je rotation problems for je in the last 10 years okay so again i'll answer this in the physics surgery quickies question and series and comment your answer along with the timestamp below it's an easy question okay so let's move on to the fourth one it's slightly tougher okay right uh, but i'll still call this as a um, advanced level question it's tougher side you can compare it with the 2020 model type of uh, question paper uh, but what it what keeps it uh, in the je advanced range is that the value of this uh, uh, rotating cone, uh, sorry, not rotating cone. This is a rolling uh, object inside a cone that is there. Okay, so there's an object which is rolling inside the surface of a fixed cone. What keeps it in J advanced level is that small r of this uh, disk that is there is much smaller than the radius of the circular motion, right? So, very, very small disk therefore easily solvable using je concept so try to read the question carefully word by word comment your answer along with the timestamp below so that i can respond or i'll make a video in the future in the quickie series the last one is the real tough one okay so the rolling coin question very famous one right but this is beyond je advanced uh, level because this time the radius of this object is not small and there is a condition for which this is actually going to exist so Try to answer the question for the uh, frequency and comment your answer below. Those students who are well versed with Euler equations and moment of inertia tensor only can answer this. So pure JE aspirants, they can stay away from this, but I'll take this up in the Olympiad workout series in the near future once the JE advanced exam is over. Okay. So I'll tell you something where JE actually unknowingly touched upon this concept of Euler equations or the moment of inertia tensor. Ah, there it is, the famous JE 2016 problem, right? Another JE problem which requests actually tensors for the complete analysis. I have already done the video on this in, a, in my JE advanced solution series, but what I did in that video is I used only JE concepts to disprove some of the options in the video. We didn't do the complete analysis. It was a long video. I just cut it short because I wanted to keep JE students in mind and read the first para below that video's description for the disclaimer that we didn't do it completely. We just went for the options and tried to see what we can do in the exam situation. I'll come up with a complete solution using Euler equations in the Olympiad workout series. As I already promised, we'll take up some of those questions for the Olympiad aspirants in our channel, okay? So link of this old video is in the description below and the I button above, try to check it out and please do read that paragraph below the uh, video uh, in the disclaimer, okay? So uh, that would enlighten you. And rest of the video, the starting parts and all that were 
pretty much within the JE syllabus. So that was a very good one there. Okay, right. And also, please do check out the Discord server that we have, and there is a rotation channel, and the questions that are being discussed among students at that particular Discord uh, server are really at the level of 2020 papers, right? So which you will not get in usual books or anything. So if you are not part of that rotation channel, I think you're missing out on something, especially if you're serious for good rank in JE Advanced. So please do check out the server and also keep a tab on the community tab of the channel, hit the notification bell icon so that whenever I upload a question in the community tab, you'll get a notification, okay? So in case you are new to this Discord idea and all that, you're a beginner and you're beginner to this channel, watch a video tutorial that I made on what is Discord, how to use it and what is the physics surgery official discord server doing link of that video is shared in the description below or in the i button above please do have a check and i'll see you there and apart from the je advanced solution series there are other series i've written only four there are many more link offs all those playlists are in the description below so please make sure you explore them anyway you have to download those pdfs that i talk, talked about in the description you'll go there so i think you'll also see the rest of the links okay so and that's it. And I keep saying knowledge is power, knowledge shared is power multiplied. So please do like, share and subscribe to the channel to keep it moving and try to use this channel as much as possible as long as it is free. Okay, so uh, thanks for staying this long and see you in the next one.